we've known each other a long time. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, one thing that I like to talk about with anybody who comes on is kind of your own personal journey with your financial plans and things like that. And you have three kids, two kids in college. Well, one graduated. One just graduated. So you had two kids in college, (laughs) almost three. So you got another one on the way to college soon. And then one in college and one just finishing college. And so you've been through kind of a couple of different seasons Mm -hmm. of parenting and financial questions and I'm sure bumps in the road. And you guys have had rental property and done some other things Mm -hmm. like that. And so um, what is one of the best financial decisions you've ever made or the best pieces of financial advice you've ever been given? Well, um, as you know, uh, Tommy and I started early having, having kids, getting married. I think one of the best things we, we're not big planners, obviously, but it worked out that we grew into our needs rather than, you know, jumping into a career. I, I, I Tommy and I got married right out of college. I had a uh, Thompson right, right after college. So instead of jumping into a full-time job, um, I had him and I worked part-time, but it was okay because I wasn't going from a full-time salary back into Mm -hmm. staying home with him. Mm -hmm. So we kind of had a little bit of slow growth in the beginning. We, we had just what we needed and that was enough. Um, so I think that was good for me to not have to pull away from a career to start a family. I started a family and then grew into my career. Start slow. Start slow. (laughs) Yeah, no, that's a, that's a great piece of advice. I mean, especially, and it's hard to communicate that now to young people. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, when, I mean, your son just started kind of his new career out of school and it's like, he's going to all of a sudden have access to money that he didn't have before. And then he's going to feel the need to spend it like he hasn't before and all that sort of stuff. And so the idea of how do we communicate starting slow is a really good message for sure. Have you ever made any like major financial blunders? Like one of the uh, big financial mistakes you've made. It's it's almost the same answer. Oh really? <laughs> <laughs> um, I I think again we started slow, but we started with a family. So not starting my career, not not having a full time job until twelve years after graduating from after uh, graduating from college at LR. Um, I, I didn't start a 401k until then, and I could have had a lot of money saved up to that point, but mm. I invested in my family early on. Yeah. So I don't know if you'd call that a blunder, but um, that was that's probably something that, that I don't know if you'd call it suffered because I, I wouldn't change a thing about it. But I didn't have a huge nest egg started uh, when most people do by the time they, you know, are in their mid to late 30s. So, but um, that, I I guess that was the closest thing that I can think of. That's really interesting. You know, that is one of the more challenging things about the work that we do is being able to try to communicate the balance between really what matters. And I've seen that kind of a situation happen certainly plenty of times. And I understand what you're saying. It's like, well, you could look at the balance sheet and say, well, if I had started socking away money and investing back when I was 22 versus investing in my family, then I would have X amount of dollars Mm -hmm. on my balance sheet. But you also were there in a period of time and in a season that you needed to be there. And that doesn't really, and we don't know what, you can't put a monetary value we, on that. And we don't know when we're going to be able to actually spend that balance sheet, yeah. right? We're not promised tomorrow. And so to find kind of some balance between what it is that we're doing now, we see this a lot really um, with people that are kind of of our age right now where they look at their parents' experience and they say, okay, well, my dad worked, you know, 70 hours a week so that he could just save and save and save and sock away and sock away and sock away. And he's got a couple million dollars saved. And then he finally gets a chance to retire and him and mom finally move to the beach. And then, um, they're really unhappy or then Mm -hmm. somebody gets sick or somebody passes away suddenly or whatever. And it's like, all of a sudden you look back in these 20 or 30 years of grinding away for that someday in the future pile of money, it really didn't mean a whole lot. And so that's, that's a challenging thing. I think that's what's so important about keeping communication lines open with clients 
and having a good team as your financial advisory team so that you can have those conversations to say, what is most important right now? Yeah. Like I want you to save and I want you to invest and you need to plan for the future. But if you're not home, if you're missing ball games, if you never go on vacation, that's a problem. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And that's not a good way to kind of navigate those financial seasons of your life either. Yeah. That's, so. that's a thin line to walk too. It is, it? but you have to, you know, and you'll be on one side of it or the other at different times for different reasons, but you do have to have some perspective to say, I'm really glad I did this this way. Uh, I wish I could have done this differently, but here's where we yeah. are. And the journey has been a good one up to this point. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Uh, and like I said, it's, I, w I really wouldn't change anything. So, um, well, you guys have an amazing family, great <laughs> kids. So you're doing awesome.